Sometimes the most famous pieces merit another look to discover added nuance. Perhaps the most famous Ramban, Allah Torah, is the Ramban and Kedushim to you. The Torah commands us to be holy. It seems a very general directive. And the Ramban explains that it avoids the phenomena of Naval Bershit Torah. Someone who is a scoundrel with the Torah's permission, who technically keeps the entire halakha, but fails to lead a holy life, involved all day in eating meat, meat and drinking wine and cohabiting with his wife. This is not a holy life. And that is the directive of Kedushim to you. And the Ramban has two parallels to this. He says that the mitzvah of Shabbaton on Shabbat and Yom Tov demands that we keep a holy spirit, a Shabbat spirit, beyond the letter of the law. One could spend all day discussing business, and that would certainly not be uh, in the spirit of Shabbat. And Vasita Yashar Vatov is in the interpersonal ethical sphere that one could technically keep all the halacha, but still not be a person of benevolence and compassion. So for the Ramban, the Torah cares greatly about a spirit of the law, about values that extend beyond the technical halacha, and it's manifest three times, Kedushim to you, Shabbaton, and Vasita Yashar Vatov. However, one could ask the question, how does one go about going beyond the letter of the law? Precisely because we're not getting concrete, specific details, it becomes a challenge. Uh, one could rely to some degree on human intuition, but is there guidance that could extend beyond that from the tradition? So I think if you read the Ramban and Kedoshim to you carefully, we'll see he has three models. Model one is we extrapolate from the halachic data that we already have. Uh, the Ramban seems to be negative about someone who drinks all day. So the Ramban says, you know, a Nazir is someone who's Kadosh. I know that's a debate, but the Ramban thinks highly of the Nazir. So if the Nazir is Kadosh and he abstains or she abstains from wine, so clearly there is something uh, holy about not being involved, overly involved in alcohol consumption. So we could take the halachic data we have and expand beyond it. That is one model. Of course, we also have explicit statements, either in Tanakh or in Chazal. Right, Ramban cites a Pasuk in Yeshayo that is negative about nivel peh. So we learn that it's bad to use coarse language to speak with profanity, whether or not there is a formal isur. And then there's a third category, which might be the most important. And the Ramban says, I know that alcohol consumption is negative from the stories of Noah and Lot, that they both get drunk and then negative things occur. And here we get insight into the entire idea that the Torah combines law and narrative. And of course, later manifest in Chazal, in the combination of Halakha and Agadah. And apparently there are certain things you can get from law and other things you have to get from narrative. They don't lend themselves to concrete and specific application. For example, one cannot imagine a Hilchot Kas or a Hilchot Gava, right? Things like anger and arrogance uh, are not things that lend themselves to that kind of precision. And yet, of course, we need guidance. And the guidance comes most powerfully through narrative, through the world of stories. And here the Torah is combining the halacha, the concreteness of mitzvot, with the guidance we get from narrative. And now, if you'd like to extend Jewish values beyond the halacha, we now in the Ramban have several models. We extrapolate from data, halachic data that we have. We look at explicit statements in our tradition. And of course, we read narrative with great sensitivity and literary care to figure out what ideals are being portrayed through these narratives. So when we all combine successfully the uh, rigors and concreteness of halakhic detail with the beauty, inspiration, and guidance of narrative. Thank you.